it says in Psalms 9, verse 17, For the wicked shall be turned into hell, and all nations that forget God. Okay? Yep, there it is. The wicked shall be turned into hell, and all nations that forget God. There it is in black and white, okay? That's happening in America right now as we speak. Do you understand? And we are in the apocalypse. We are just at coming to the end of the age and things are just gonna get worse, okay? These are the beginnings of sorrow, so that's what the Bible says. The uh, divorce rate in America is astronomical. That's why it says that in the end of the age that love shall wax cold because of iniquity. What does that mean? That basically means that kids don't love uh, their parents because they don't live under the same roof. It's hard to honor your parents, your mother and father, if they're divorced and living in two separate places. So they end up being raised by people that really don't love them as much as their real parents. You understand? And I'm not bad-mouthing step-parents. So before you get uh, your feathers all messed up here, I'm not bad-mouthing step-parents. Do you understand? But because of adultery, fornication, the lust of money, and a lot of other reasons, the divorce rate in America is just getting worse and worse as time goes by. Marriage is so bad that people are trying to redefine what marriage is. And marriage is a holy thing that God made, not man. God made Adam and Eve. That was the first marriage. Do you understand? Marriage is of the heart. The ceremony in a church, okay, is a ceremony. But a true marriage is of the heart and the spirit. Two shall become one. And that means a man and a woman, not a man and a man, or a woman and a woman, or a man and, you know, 30 women. One man and one woman. That is a holy thing to God. You understand? It's one of the most important things to God is marriage and family. And it is. Most of the Ten Commandments, I mean, have to do with love. They have to do with honoring your parents. And like I said, it's hard to honor your mother and father if they don't live in the same roof and they're divorced. Do you understand? That's why love is waxing cold because of iniquity. Do you understand? People are getting divorced for, uh, you know, I know uh, people have gotten married and divorced in the same year. It used to be you had to have a waiting period, okay? And I'm not being a hypocrite because I myself have been married and divorced. I'm a, I'm a second wife and I've been married now for 11 years with my second wife. My first wife, I was together 16 years. She committed, well, I don't want to say what she did, okay? I, I let me back myself up. Okay, I did divorce her, but I'm telling you, um, my kids, she had a boyfriend. Do you understand how it is? I'm a stepfather of three kids. I don't feel the same way for them as I do with my normal kids. And anybody that says that they love their stepkids the same is lying to you. They're a liar. They're just being kind of like polit politically correct. They're just full of shit is what they really are. Love shall wax cold because of iniquity. You understand? The marriages are falling apart. The divorce rate is astronomical. Kids are being raised by people who are not their parents. And that's why love is waxing cold. Okay? Anyway, the, there are other signs at the end of the age here. Uh, diverse earthquakes. I don't have to explain that. One of the worst ones in recent history, of course, was in Japan. The weather is changing. God speaks to the world through weather. There's no such thing as global warming. Read Luke. It's in Luke that the things that are happening, the waves tossing to and fro in the oceans with perplexity, meaning nobody knows what's happening. Some people think it's this. Some people think it's that. Do you think God doesn't know what's going on? Of course he does. He's trying to wake this world up very in a very gentle way. And he uses weather to do it because weather circumvents all human language. Everybody understands weather all around the world. 
even if we don't speak the same language, weather, I'll say it again, is uh, circumvents human language. All people with all languages throughout the world understand that the weather is changing. That is God trying to speak to the world, to gently wake up the world. Okay? It's kind of like, wake up, children, we're almost home. Okay? And I don't want to, that, that's putting that in a very simple way, but it's kind of the truth. You know, wake up just before we get home here. Anyway, some of the other signs of the end of the age is Israel became a nation in 1948. Now, you got to listen, okay? Abraham, the patriarch of all faith, okay? He's the patriarch for the Judaism and Christianity. He is not the patriarch for Islam. That's ridiculous to think that. There's no such thing as Abrahamic religion. Some jackass made that up. Anyway, he's the patriarch for Judaism and Christianity, okay? Abraham was born, according to the Jewish calendar, in 1948, okay, Israel became a nation again. It was a nation to begin with, and then it was the diaspora where God sprinkled the world with salt. He made uh, his people go all over the world so they would influence cultures, and now he's calling them back home, and it's going to be the end of the diaspora. Do you understand? He, he kind of like salted it. He said the Jews are the salt of the earth. Do you understand my metaphor here? But I want you to think. Abraham became uh, the forefather of the Hebrew people, the Jewish people, and he's also spiritually the father of Christians. He is. Do you understand? Anyway, I'll say it again. Abraham was born according to the Jewish calendar of 1948. Israel was reborn in the Christian calendar in 1948. You think that's a coincidence? It's not a coincidence, okay? It's a beautiful thing. You understand? It's just another reason to believe in God. The word history is, uh, is two different words. His story. It is God's story. The Holy Bible is his story. The Holy Bible has a beginning, a middle, you know, in an end, the Alpha and Omega. In the beginning of the Old Testament, which is to the Jews, the Torah, he explains not in great detail that the Genesis is a very compressed book, especially at the beginning. It's so compressed, your, your mind can't compute all he did. You understand in those days. He just, in the Holy Bible, you just get a few things, just very few. Do you understand? But it does explain in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. And then it goes up to the prophets, the book of Moses and the book of prophets. Okay, that's the Old Testament. The prophets speak of a Messiah to come. And that's where the Old Testament ends. The New Testament is a continuation of the Old Testament story. It, the Old Testament talks about uh, how a Messiah is going to come. The New Testament says that uh, this is how Jesus, the Messiah, was born. This is what he did. And then he died and sac was a sacrifice on the cross. And then it goes on to talk uh, to the Christians all the way through Revelation where it comes to the end of the world. So it has a beginning and end. It's a complete book. The Holy Bible is complete. Does not need any other writings at all. The Quran is a false doctrine. Muhammad is a false prophet. Do you understand? And Allah is not God at all. Allah is Satan in disguise. Think of, uh, look up when, when, when Jesus was tempted in the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, you only get three things that happened. I guarantee you there was a lot more that happened in 40 days and 40 nights. It's on purpose that you're only aware of three things. And one of them was Satan told him if he uh, got down on his knees and worshiped him, that he would give him all the kingdoms uh, in the world. Do you understand? And of course he didn't do it. So there you have a window that, that is, you can see that Satan wants to be worshiped even by the son of God. Do you understand? He still is the same. He wants to be worshiped, but he doesn't want to be exposed. 
Do you understand? True light ex exposes and uh, it overtakes darkness. Darkness will never overtake light. Do you understand? When the sun comes up in the morning, it overtakes darkness. Darkness does never takes over light. Therefore, greater, if you believe in Jesus, greater is he that's within you than he that's within this world. Okay, Satan is the ruler of the darkness. You understand? And I've, I've, I've said this on other uh, teachings. The sun represents God. The moon represents Satan. The stars in heaven represent angel. A falling star represents a fallen angel. And the earth represents you. And the ozone layers represent wedding veils. The, the veils are being lifted because Christ is coming for his bride. Okay? That's what's going on spiritually. Physically, the ozone layers are getting thinner, which is causing this world to be brighter and it's changing the weather. The seas are more turbulent. The weather is more severe. You have very severe earthquakes now, very severe hurricanes, very severe uh, tornadoes. It's all uh, to get every, everybody's attention in the world because God is gently trying to wake this world up just before the end here, just before we get to the tribulation, which is, it's not the end yet, but uh, it's the end of the age though. You can ask Christ into your heart, okay? And, and, and be saved, okay? And then pray that you're worthy to escape the things that are coming upon the earth and stand in front of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what it says in the New Testament. I suggest that you don't uh, get a bunch of gold and get a bunch of guns and stock up on food. <laughs> Do you understand all, all these crazy things people are, are doing? Some people. Do you understand? The best thing you could do is ask Christ into your heart, and I'll say it again. Listen to the words of God. Listen to God. You don't have to listen to me at all. Read the Bible. Pray that you're worthy to escape the things that are coming upon the earth, period. Anyway, there's other signs. Uh, I'll, I'll repeat this. Psalms 917. Okay. The wicked shall be turned into hell. And all nations that forget God. I would say a nation that uh, has a high divorce rate, that uh, commits adultery, that does drugs, that does illegal drugs, prescription drugs, and has an enormous amount of violence that's happening and it's getting worse, okay, has forgotten God. I would say a nation that has aborted millions of innocent little babies, do you understand? The crown jewel of God is babies, you know, great creation, okay, and the replenishment of the earth. Do you understand? Uh, unfortunately, the people that were supposed to probably cure AIDS were probably put to death because some young girl got pregnant and decided she didn't want to raise a baby, okay? Every human being that's not born changes world history. I hate to tell you that, but it's true. Everyone is important. Your little acts of kindness are extremely important. You will never know until you get to heaven. Your little acts of kindness, such as helping a stranger with money, helping somebody that's down and out, helping somebody opening a door for somebody, giving somebody a glass of water, something to eat. You have no idea how that, how that affects a human being. You have no idea what they're going through on the inside. I've had... Uh, the greatest experiences that I've had in my 56 years of living have always been little acts of kindness that have given a rebirth uh, for, for the, uh, to think that humanity was actually worth uh, um, loving again and uh, taking another look at humanity. I certainly understand why God flooded the earth at my age. When I was young, I thought that was mean. I thought it was cruel. I thought he was crazy. Why would you create man just to flood the earth after a few years. And if you know everything, why do, it sounds crazy. Why would you create man only to kill off man years later? You understand? God, and I learned, God has hope. He didn't know what was going to happen. He has hope. Do you have hope? He has hope. You understand? He's hopeful. He's full of hope. All the way to the end, he's going to be full of hope. Do you understand? Anyway, some more. Any nation 
that uh, affirms sodomy and, and AIDS and the spread of AIDS is certainly for God, God. The recognition of gay marriage affirms that's what they want. They want a marriage so they can get to something that heterosexuals have, kids. Don't think it. It's coming next. You understand? And who made it that way? Basically, four Jewish, secular Jewish women on the Supreme Court paved the way for a nation that has uh, got a lot of Christians in it, paved the way for eventually gays getting one thing they could never have, children, because children are a great source of love. But they don't need to be in a house that deprives them of a mother and deprives them of a father. And uh, they don't need to live in a home where in the bedroom uh, awful things are going on, and I'm not going to be graphic, but you know what sodomy is, okay? God says it's wrong. It's always going to be wrong, period. Nevertheless, America has a lot of problems, and it's forgotten God. And it is being turned into hell. Let it. Don't try to stop it. I do believe there's going to be another financial uh, huge problem in our future, in the near future, I believe. I'm not trying to prophesize that at all. Listen to a man named Jonathan Kahn. He's a Messianic Jew out of New Jersey. I do believe he's a true uh, instrument of God. He talks about the mystery of the Shemitah. I'm not going to explain that. Look him up. Jonathan Kahn, K H. K-A-H-N, I believe. And look up the mystery of the Shemitah. You can find it on YouTube or he wrote a book. He talks about finances and the rhythm of finances in American history. And we are due for something. And it's going to happen either this year or next or next week. I don't know. Do you understand? Nevertheless, a nation that forgets God shall be turned into hell. When do you think most people call out to God? When things are going good? Nope. They call out for God when they're living in a, a hell. You understand? A hell created by divorce can leave you heartbroken and you feel like you're alone. That's a living hell. And then you start calling out for God. People do not call out for God when everything is good. Okay. They don't. I'm going to take off my silly hat once again. And I'm just trying to get your attention on YouTube to put out an important message. I'm up against millions of other videos and a lot of good people are just like me trying to spread the truth about the gospel of Christ before it's too late. Because at some point in time, it will be too late. You understand? You know, like my Charlie Brown Christmas tree, I actually gave that to my wife for our anniversary about uh, a week ago because we're celebrating in America the 50th anniversary of Charlie Brown. And I'm using it as a decoration for my video here. I know I don't have a shirt on. That was another idea of getting attention on YouTube. I'm not here to offend anybody. <laughs> Do you understand? This is an important message. Danny, if you're a Christian, don't try to fight anything in this world. This world is just going to go away someday. But God's word... His word will never stop. Do you understand? This world is going to end someday. It will. This is a temporary world. It's not even real. And I've taught that in other teachings. It's not real. It's, I don't want to teach it now because I'm up to about 19 minutes here. You understand? Heaven is more real than this so-called real world. This is a smaller reality that is part of a much broader and bigger and more real reality that you can't see with your eyes. You can only see with your heart. Jesus said, blessed are the pure in heart for they should see God. You will only see God with your heart, not with your eyes. And I know a lot of people, I don't know what God looks like or what Jesus looked like. Okay, I guarantee you in the flesh, Jesus looked, looked just like uh, John and Mary's son. Guarantee it. Do you understand? doesn't matter what he looks like. That's irrelevant. Do you understand? To know Jesus is to know his heart because he has the same heart as God the Father. Both of them have the same desire and will that all of mankind be saved. They do. And if you uh, accept Jesus 
into your heart, you will be saved. Okay. Anyway, I hope you have a, a I hope you made it this far in this video. There are a lot of pearls of wisdom in this video. Once again, I'll say, don't judge me as a person here with no shirt and my hair is a mess and I have a Charlie Brown Christmas tree. Those are just gimmicks to get your attention on YouTube. Judge the words that I'm saying. Look them up in the Bible and, and then you'll know if I'm lying or telling the truth.